Maybe you guessed the answer. Yes, of the 345 emperors counted, 162 died of abnormal causes rather than common diseases. This ratio reached a staggering 47%. Among them, 14 died by suicide. Specific methods of deaths include hanging, sea jumping, self immolation, hunger strike, and even asking others to kill themselves. If you are to ask which dynasty of emperors has the highest suicide rate, the answer is Ming. Among Ming's 20 emperors, four of them killed themselves, resulting in the suicide rate as high as 20%. In contrast to the social turmoil that had been fighting for years between kingdoms, there have now been a large number of emperors killed or wounded on the battlefield, only 11 people. Concerned in these two causes, the most famous figure is Gaozu Liu Bang, the founding father of the Han Empire. He was shot by an arrow during a war with Qin's remnants. This number shows that in order to protect themselves, the emperors will not go out easily. On the contrary, most of them died in direct assassinations by people around them. The number reached 97. These assassins included ministers, eunuchs, and even their wives, sons, and brothers. There are also two founding fathers in this group of people. One is Yang Jian, the Emperor Wen Di of Sui Dynasty. He endeavored to establish the unified Sui, ending the division of ancient China for more than 260 years. But in his later years, he was killed by his son, who succeeded him. Just like his fate, the Sui Dynasty lasted only 37 years, becoming the second short-lived unified dynasty in Chinese history. The other case is Li Yuanhao, the founding father of Western Xia dynasty. One of his sons brutally cut off his nose while he was drunk, causing him to bleed to death. Under the lure of power, there are no fathers and sons, only profiters and sacrifices. In addition, there is a secret method of assassination that is poisoning. 24 emperors died in this insidious method. Similar to the medieval Europe, the main component of ancient Chinese poisons is arsenic, but with different names. Besides, many poisoners use certain toxic herbs and woody plants such as oleanders. According to legend, there is another terrible method, which is using toxic insects to torture people to death. Back to Empress, the most worth mentioning one is Li Yu. He is not only the last ruler of Thousand Tang Kingdom, but also one of the most famous poets in ancient China. Most of his poems are full of endless anxiety and sorrow. This also implied his miserable end. Of course, there is another condition, that is some Empress will get poisoned by themselves. They believe in ancient Chinese alchemy, which contained a lot of sulfur and heavy metals. Over time, they poisoned themselves. This number came to seven people. When time came to the Ming and the Qing periods, the emperor's superstition of alchemy was accompanied by the climax of their feudal rule. In the Ming dynasty, three emperors died of taking elixir. Here, it is necessary to mention the Emperor Yongzheng of the Qing Dynasty. He was sandwiched between two long-lived emperors, but he only lived to be 57 years old. Although this was above the average lifespan of Chinese emperors, it was relatively short given the prosperity of Qing. There is one saying that he died of poison murder. Another is that he was chronically poisoned by taking elixir. Therefore, his death has become one of the four historical mysteries of the Qing dynasty. In addition, six emperors died on their beds due to excessive indulgence. At this moment, you must be wondering 
how that emperor of the Song Dynasty, with eighty children, died. But this answer may disappoint you. He died of assassination rather than overindulgence. Here, we need to talk about another emperor. It is Tongzhi of the Qing Dynasty. He also didn't die of overindulgence, but like many other celebrities of his time in Europe, his life ended with syphilis. Therefore, he became the only emperor in Chinese history to catch a venereal disease. Except for indulgence, three people died in other accidents, including drunkenness and horse falling. In fact, some of the emperors who passed away normally also died of psychological problems, including depression, anxiety, fright, and excessive sadness. This number also came to twelve. This bloody death encyclopedia might explain why the average lifespan of the Chinese emperor is only thirty-eight years old.